I want to stay in the U.S. right now because new court filings and two former Trump associates are lifting the veil on the Russia probe and implicating President Donald Trump in two election-related crimes. For the first time, federal prosecutors say former Trump attorney Michael Cohen committed crimes at the direction of Mr. Trump and that a well-connected Russian national offered Cohen, quote, political synergy with the Trump campaign. Well, another filing says Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort lied about five major issues after he agreed to cooperate. That includes his recent contact with administration officials and his contacts Manafort had with a Russian national who had ties to Russian military intelligence. Uh, Jeremy Herb joins us now from Washington. And Jeremy, if federal prosecutors have determined that Michael Cohen, Trump's former lawyer, committed crimes under the direction of Donald Trump, and they can prove that, what does that mean for the President of the United States? Yeah, I think that's the big looming question we have in the wake of these two filings. Um, the President wasn't directly accused of a crime, but he was, as you said, implicated in the crimes that Cohen committed because Mr. Cohen said he, so he committed them at the direction of then-candidate Trump. Now, the Justice Department has said a sitting president cannot be indicted, so it's not clear whether Mr. Mueller or the uh, federal attorneys in Manhattan who laid out these charges last night uh, will take that step. What this could become, though, is a matter for the Congress, which will be given, uh, potentially, at the end of the Mueller report, a summary of the findings and have to decide at that point whether they want to move forward with impeachment proceedings. So for the president, this could be more of a political issue than a legal one while he's in office in terms of questioning whether or not the president winds up having to face impeachment in a Democratic-controlled House next year. Yeah, not uh, a great way to start the new year. Jeremy Herb, good to have you with us. Thanks so much. Thank you. Well, CNN political commentator and assistant editor for The Washington Post, David Swerdlick, joins me now for more on this. And, David, I want to start off with the president's tweet because clearly he is trying to put out that he doesn't have a problem here. He tweeted, totally clears the president. Thank you. Well, of course, we heard from uh, his advisor, Kellyanne Conway's husband, who is a lawyer right. in D.C., and he took to Twitter and said, except for the little part where the U.S. attorney's office says you directed and coordinated with Cohen to commit two felonies. Other than that, totally scot-free. Uh, that, that explanation, summarizing all the documents, it doesn't get much more clearer than that, does it? Uh, well, no, and George Conway, as you say, has a way with words. He has written several op-eds, and he is Kellyanne Conway's husband, but has also publicly made it known he's joined a group of Republican lawyers who have expressed, uh, you know, skepticism of the president's position on a variety of issues. Um, to the point he makes in that tweet, uh, the pro we learned yesterday that the prosecutors in New York, the federal prosecutors in New York, are pursuing at least on the Cohen side of the ledger, uh, the, a case that the president directed, the president is widely uh, regarded as the individual one named in the complaint, that the president directed Michael Cohen to make payments to mistresses at a, around the time of the election, and that it wasn't merely to protect his reputation, but to uh, hopefully influence the outcome wound up being proven, and clearly pr prosecutors believe this is the case, then that would be a campaign finance violation implicating Michael Cohen and potentially President Trump. But that hasn't been proven yet, but that's clearly the direction prosecutors are going in. That's not collusion, though, Linda, and I think the collusion aspect is more on that other side of the ledger with uh, Paul Manafort. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And and if we can, if you can weigh in on that, because when we saw the documents related to Paul Manafort and we learned that he lied to investigators. Right. Uh, the big question was what was he lying about when it was clear that he was trying to cooperate to get a lenient sentence. So we, it seems it turns out one of the main lies was Russian related in terms of uh, regarding Ukrainian contact with links to the Russian military intelligence. Right. Let's remember that Paul Manafort, for a long time as a political consultant, worked with the uh, previous 
pro-Russia uh, regime in Ukraine and has a variety of contacts in UK Ukraine and Russia. And one of them, uh, according to prosecutors, is this individual, Konstantin Kilimnik, who uh, prosecutors and the federal government allege has ties to the GRU, Russian military intelligence. And from yesterday's filings, again, what we see is that prosecutors are are building a case that there was some reason, we don't know why, uh, why a Manafort, as they allege, was lying to cover up uh, both, uh, you know, uh, calls or texts that he made to intercede on Kilimnik's behalf, and also that he had communications uh, while he was already under criminal indictment with uh, people in the White House uh, circle or the president's legal circle. Uh, I want to make sure I state that correctly. Uh, people close to the president. I, I, I don't, I don't want to misstate that. But, but the bottom line is, why, as Jeremy said in his report there, is Manafort uh, covering this up, according to prosecutors? And if prosecutors connect those dots, Linda, I think that gets us closer to whether or not Special Counsel Mueller has a collusion case to make. Yeah, that is the big question. Why? Why would he be lying about that? We also heard from uh, Donald Trump's lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, who, who spoke to CNN tonight and said, when you look at what was revealed today, there's nothing that links the president to collusion with the Russians. So maybe they should fold up their tent, give a report to the Justice Department and go home. <laughs> so clearly, despite everything that's come out, uh, President Trump and his team still hoping this will just go away. Right. So Mayor Giuliani, uh, you know, sort of pops his head up periodically and makes a statement very similar to that, suggesting nothing to see here. We can all go home now. Let's pack it up and move on with our lives. Except that generally right around the time he makes those kind of statements, you have the special counsel team or the federal prosecutors in the Southern District of New York coming forward with additional information. So there's that mismatch. At a minimum, based on what we're talking about here, there's a strong suggestion now from the prosecutors in New York that the president may have been involved in uh, in, in a federal election campaign violation, an in-kind contribution, the payments to the alleged mistresses, according to Michael Cohen's testimony, that's something that Congress will wind up taking a look at, and it remains to be seen whether they'll treat that as, as Jeremy said, an impeachable offense. And then on the other side, there are still dots to be connected on collusion, uh, So, and the president is not... Uh, charged with a crime yet, but if there's a connection later found or demonstrated between what was going on with Manafort, what was going on with Cohen and his trips to uh, uh, trips to Russia and his communications with officials in the Russian government, which we learned last week went on until uh, 2016 when Donald Trump was a candidate, and then you're going to have a situation where the president is going to either have to answer further questions to the public or to Congress. David Swedlick, a lot to stay across. Good to yes. have you on the case. Thanks so much. Thank you, Linda.